Hi, I'm Tendai from Decipher, and this is Unboxing, where we look at all the new gadgets coming into our studios here at iProvia. Today we're going to be looking at the FreeSat PVR from Humax. FreeSat is a relatively new entry into the television platform market, and Humax, our device manufacturer, have developed a range of FreeSat compatible boxes. This is the first PVR they've made for use on the platform. So this is the box. As you can see on the front, this is the PVR here, and it tells you a little synopsis of everything it does. It's got HD and SD channel recording. Uh, it's got uh, twin channel recording as well, so you can get simultaneous viewing of one channel while it's watching another. It's got the ability to pause and rewind live TV, as you'd expect from any kind of uh, PVR. Uh, 320 gigabyte hard drive, which is pretty big. Uh, you've got your one-touch recording and series recording as well, as you'd usually expect. On the side, there's another complete list of everything else it does, all the contents, that kind of stuff. And on the back, there's some handy guidelines on how you get FreeSat, because a lot of people probably won't understand that, as well as what you get from FreeSat whenever you've started actually um, installing it. Alright, so let's take a look inside. First thing we've got, instruction manual, pretty handy. Bag full of stuff. We've got quick start guides. Something else. Start lead. That looks to me to be an HDMI cable. And usual AV connections. So that's remote control and some batteries. Pretty handy. This is the box itself. As you can see, it looks quite like some of the new Sony uh, Blu-ray players, so they're going for a high-end look. Nice finish. On the back, you can see we've got two line-ins, and that's what uh, allows you to record a channel whilst watching another channel. Uh, you've also got your uh, composite AV outputs, two SCART connections. Now this one's the interesting one. It's actually an optical audio out connection which allows you to use a 5.1 surround sound system with a home cinema and that's pretty high quality audio. You've also got your HDMI slot there which you use with your HDMI cable and it says on the box that it's actually uh, 1080i is the highest resolution it goes to which is pretty high standard. Now you've got um, Ethernet slot there as well. Uh, on the box it actually mentions the Ethernet slot but doesn't say that it's being used for anything so perhaps it got something in the pipeline for the future. And on the box, it doesn't mention this little baby here, which is a USB connection, so perhaps I have some ideas for that too. Turning the box around, we can see the front here, there's a little flip down panel. It has a couple of function buttons that you'd normally find in your remote control, but if your remote control breaks or whatever. Uh, we've also got another USB slot right here, and also a smart card slot. I'm not really sure what that's about, but uh, let's check it out whenever we plug it into the TV. Today we're going to be plugging the box into this uh, Toshiba 720p TV using this HDMI cable. Once you've got the box plugged in, you get the little Humax startup screen followed by a step-by-step -step setup process. The first step involves optimizing the output from the box for viewing on your television set. And as you can see, the resolution goes uh, all the way up to 1080i, so that's pretty high quality. The second step involves the box searching for a satellite signal from your dish, which is connected to the back of your box, using two satellite cables. The box then uses this satellite signal to search for software updates, and as you can see, there aren't any yet. The third step gets you down to your postcode. You enter the numbers and letters using a mobile phone text message type of function with the numbers in your remote control. We assume the postcode is used to determine which regional television variety to broadcast to your box. Once your postcode has been verified, uh, clicking on next takes you on to step four. Here the box uses the satellite signal to search for all the available channels in range. As you can see, using a satellite signal is dramatically faster than doing a scan using a terrestrial transmission. 
and uh, from our scan the box found 144 channels of which 107 were TV then there follows a screen explaining the guidance policy and also a summary of the information you've just entered then you're pretty much ready to go with them, but we also heard from the, Muslim the EPG menu has a typical free set look to it with the logo at the top and as you can see it's a transparent overlay allowing you to keep an eye on the live TV behind and if you go right across the top to list you can see a list of all the programs on today on each channel going right again you can see your recording schedule and as you can see we haven't set anything to record yet so it's empty and this next tab across is the find screen allowing you to search for uh, shows by keyword genre and time of day going into the keyword menu you get an alphabetical keyboard which you can change for text message type interface by clicking on SMS and here you can see we're searching for a uh, popular BBC car and entertainment series hitting search gives us a list of all the next available episodes we also get the option of recording the series, individual episodes, or setting a viewing reminder. Going back, you can also search, search by genre. Here we're going to search for sport, and we're given a list of all the upcoming sport programs available. Back to live TV, there are a bunch of helpful symbols on the channel bar at the bottom there, uh, showing things like whether teletext or interactive is available your display settings, subtitle availability and how far through the pro current program you are. There's also a symbol indicating the fact that you can get an audio description of the program on this channel. We also tried plugging a USB memory stick into the slot in the front and a little message popped up to acknowledge it. We then pressed the button on the remote control which opened our devices menu allowing us to access the USB drive. We look through our folders and also manage to play some music from the drive. We also managed to successfully copy some songs across onto the PVR hard drive. It's also possible to copy video and image files across in the same way. And there you can see the song files sitting on the PVR hard drive. After we recorded a bunch of content onto the PVR, we plugged the USB stick in again this time tried to copy content from the PVR hard drive across onto a memory stick. The transfer took around three minutes to complete. That was for a 15 minute program. For a half hour program it takes about six minutes and an hour long about 12 minutes depending on file size. Afterwards we were given the option of deleting the original file. We click no and there you can see the show is now sitting in the USB menu on the right. So you've seen what it looks like and what it does. If you'd like to have a play around with it or any of our other devices, then book a session down here at our Iberbia Studios in Chiswick.